Hey guys, what's up and welcome. Today we have a Sunday video. We've got Powell on Bloomberg. The Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell speaks about the evidence in the economy that suggests monetary policy is not too high. He also goes on to say that recent moves in bonds help reduce some of the incentives to raise rates. He's going to be interviewed by David Weston, guys. This was posted on Friday, 1020. As always, I hope you guys enjoy the video. We're going to jump right into it. The next FOMC meeting is going to be November 1st, so this is kind of what they're going to be talking about. Hope you guys enjoy the video, and let's jump in. We certainly have a very uh, uh, resilient economy on our hands. We've got uh, the economy growing strongly. If you think back a year, many forecasts called for the U.S. economy to be in recession this year. Not only has that not happened, growth is now running for this year above its longer run trend. So that's been a surprise, driven largely by uh, consumer spending, driven by a very strong job market with uh, people getting jobs with high, first high nominal wages, and then as inflation has come down, real wages, which is spurring spending. And we've also had inflation coming down. So, you know, uh, that's, it, it really is a story of much stronger demand. There may also be, there may be some ways in which the economy is um, less affected by interest rates. Uh, it's hard to know precisely, but for example, any company with bond market access will have termed out its debt, right? And therefore may not be feeling the effects of higher rates. The same may be true of homeowners who have a, a long-term fixed rate, low rate mortgage, who then are therefore not, because it's not an adjustable rate or a higher rate, they're not, they're not feeling that increase in rates. So the, the economy may be somewhat less uh, susceptible to the effects of rate increases. On the other hand, if you look at... Um, That's just the people that already have a house and maybe even already have it paid off. It's almost impossible to sell your house and move. It's almost impossible for first-time home buyers, first-time car buyers. For first time, any big purchase buyers, they're getting slaughtered on interest and they cannot lock in rates this high. It is absolutely impossible. Look at interest-sensitive spending. These are very much the... the, the um, the places where we see we where we expect to see and do see effects so for example in um in housing or in you know the housing sector has been sector has been very affected by higher rates as purchases of, of uh, durable goods if you look at surveys people will not say that it's a good time to buy a car or a house quite the contrary so we see policy working through its usual channels it may just be that rates haven't been high enough for long enough. And, and again, it's all happening in a context of, of very strong demand. Uh, do you see historical precedents for having a growing economy <clears throat> with high rates over a long period of time? I mean, as you look back, I mean, is it like the late 90s, for example? What, do you, what, what analogies do you draw as you try to determine what this might be doing to the economy over the longer term? So that's really a question about what the level of rates will be going for, what the neutral level will be. And I think it's, it's very hard to know confidently what the answer to that will be. It's very smart how he has postcards to keep him on track and let him know what he maybe can and can't say. Maybe Elon should have used some of that in that Q3 conference call. Be in five years. Some of the reasons why rates were low for the last 25 years were just uh, the aging of the global population and globalization. And, you know, so lots of savings and relatively uh, with an aging population, savings greater than investment, so rates are lower. So all of those led to low interest rates. So what has changed with the pandemic? You might see less effects from globalization, certainly demographics, the, the aging of the global population has not changed. Um, I mean, this is a discussion we're having on an ongoing basis. It doesn't really affect current policy, but where will rates settle out? What will be at the, a normal rate? So if, if, the, if a typical Fed tightening cycle would leave you at five or six percent, and and this is this is in the before the pandemic and before this the low inflation period, you would have had had uh, Fed rates in four or five percent or even higher frequently. Are we going back to that? I really don't know. I wouldn't want to speculate. I mean, my guess is it'll be somewhere in the middle, but I I, I don't know. I mean, I think I think we can say this now: uh, the effect of lower bound is not an issue. You know, we were we were very concerned about that. Right now, we're very far from the effect of lower bound, and the economy's handling it just fine. But that's, you know, that's because we're at a time of, of really elevated demand uh, coming out of the pandemic as we reopened with fiscal stimulus and monetary stimulus. We have very strong demand in the United States. Hard we have very strong demand because we still have a lot of the stimulus money. It is getting towards the end, as I've said before, and they, they, a lot of people have come on and said the average consumer is getting towards the end of their spending. 
I mean, the end of their savings. And some of them are even starting to rack up debt. So this is definitely a different economy. And uh, the Fed lags are going to start to catch up. Everything he said so far seems uh, rosy and awesome, but that doesn't take into consideration the effects from everything they've had to do so far. And they're still talking about having to do more. Guys, I think when this starts to catch up, we'll see that he's, he's done more than enough. Hard to know what, what the economy will want in the way of interest rates when, when five years from now, when all of the effects of the pandemic are behind us. You mentioned the long-term um, equilibrium rate, which you talked about again back in Jackson Hole in August of 2020. Back then you said you thought it had, the sort of consensus had come down. I think it was from like 4.25% to 2.5%. Where is it today? <laughs> um, so I think it, by any reckoning, long-term interest rates and the neutral inter interest rate came down steadily over the course of several decades. So where is it today? I, I, I don't know. Uh, it, you know, we're, we're finding it, uh, basically. Uh, the, the, the idea was, that I think the median indication of what the real neutral rate was around 50 basis points before the pandemic. <laughs> It may have risen in the near term. The real question that, that matters, though, is will it rise in the long term? And that we don't know. There goes the infamous answering question with a question. But do you need to know it in order to conduct monetary policy? I mean, you must have to have at least a theory. I mean, I'm not saying you have to be right about it, but you have to have a hypothesis, don't you? As you look at the data, you have to put the data through some sort of uh, a theory. So we, we, we all write down our estimates of the longer run neutral rate every quarter in the summary of the economic projections. And, and that's based on models. It's based on also looking out the window and, and including lags, thinking how are our current rates affecting the economy. So the, the evidence of your eyes is that the economy is, is handling much higher rates, at least for now, without difficulty. So notionally, that, that might tell you that, that the neutral rate has risen, or it may just tell you that we haven't had rates high enough for long enough. Um, you're right though, but uh, you know, you, you, you have, we have models for everything, we have formulas for everything. Ultimately, as a practitioner, mm -hmm. we have to you know, be focused on what the economy is telling us, even taking lags into account. What's it telling us? Does, does it feel like policy is too tight right now? I would have to say no. I think the evidence is not that a policy is too tight right now. Um, I'm not sure what he's meaning by that. I mean, right now, as in this second, and the Fed lags haven't caught up, or where we at in the rate height cycle, even after the Fed lags catch up. I'm hoping he means literally right this minute, right today, when we're still in the rosy and good before the Fed lags catch up, but he still thinks we haven't done enough, and he's considering what is going to come when they start catching up. Guys, this economy is gonna get pretty tight. So, and we're at five, five and a quarter to five and a half percent. One of the things you're most concerned about is the real economy, what's going on in the real economy. You distinguish yourself from some of your predecessors in that you have a significant exposure to the private sector, not just the public sector, academics. As you talk to CEOs, people in business, uh, what are you hearing about the cost of capital? Because these bond prices are really affecting cost of capital uh, for the first time in a while. There was a long time the cost of capital felt like it was almost zero. And business changes an awful lot when, you really, when the price of money goes up. I talked to several people this week who run companies, and they each said that the economy remains strong and that they don't see the consumer. You know, you see it, 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 there's some areas where, where, where spending is softening, but overall, I mean, look. I just thought of the perfect analogy. This is like, okay, a train on a train tracks, and the train tracks go right off of a hill. We're right before the big ditch right before the train is about to fall completely into an unknown abyss. And we're gauging how, how is the train driving? Well, it's still driving smooth. It's still on a flat surface. It's still, everything is fine. There's nothing that's happened yet. But what about 10 feet ahead when we get to this overpass, man? I mean, come on. Look at the retail sales number. The consumer is strong. Um, uh, volume's not going up very much, but, but uh, companies are profitable. You don't, you know, now if you get to where I think the cost of capital would really matter would be for smaller companies and, and early stage companies. And that really does matter. So we, you know, we don't have a lot of tools. We have interest rates and they're far from perfect. Perfect. It's famously a blunt tool, mm -hmm. but it's what we have to get uh, uh, inflation down. And, and really the world counts on us to deliver uh, low and stable inflation. That's what we have to do. And 
you know, at a time like this, there are, you know, we know that we're having negative effects on, you know, we had the home builders in this week. It's a very tough time in the whole home building industry. And uh, we know that, uh, but ultimately, what we want to get back to is- Who can afford to have a home built, Jay Powell? Except for you and your guys in the Fed. Is a long period of price stability. That's the best thing we can provide. And that, that for policymakers and businesses and everyone can, and people can, can just lead their lives not worrying about inflation. This is what we can deliver. It's what we have to deliver. And this is the time. You know, our independence is, is not for times when we're really popular. It's for when we're now, when we're doing something that, that, that really the public counts on us to do, notwithstanding that it's, that it's challenging and difficult. And, and, you know, higher interest rates are difficult for everybody. You have not wavered from your commitment to 2%. You did it again today, 2%. No question about it. I will disagree with that. He just said they're worse for everybody, but everybody he's talking to is saying the consumer's strong. We're not feeling anything. That's because they're not talking to the lower end of the economy. The majority, the people that are living paycheck to paycheck. If you ask them if they're hurting, my gosh, well, they have a story to tell you that they can't barely pay for groceries. Their gas bill is double, just on and on and on. Every single thing you go, inflation is up like crazy, guys. But no, you talk to business owners and they still might have business coming in. What, what are we even asking? What is that really proving? There are those who suggested, including some colleagues in the Fed, that maybe the bond market is doing part of your job for you. Is that the way you see it? I, look, I would, I would say it this way. Um, the whole idea of, of uh, tightening policy is to affect financial conditions. And to the extent higher bond rates reflect that they do, they're producing tighter financial conditions right now. So that is, that's how monetary policy works. That's literally how it works. So, Again, in principle, as long as, they're, as, long as uh, bond rates are going up for, the, for some reasons, and they're not going up just because they expect us to do things, so that if we don't do them, they'll come right back down. As long as, and we don't think that's the case, actually. It doesn't, I don't think it's the case. It's, it doesn't seem to me that's, that's what, that, where analysis leads you. Then sure, that's a tightening. That's exactly what we're trying to achieve. And therefore, it seems like almost arithmetic, it must reduce some of the impetus for you to continue to raise rates. At the margin, it could. I mean, it, I think that remains to be seen. And by the way, I'm not blessing any particular level of longer term rates, We're, but just in principle, that's right. As long as they're. In principle, that's right, that the bond market is reducing some of the incentives to have to keep raising rates. Also, guys, the consumer being strong, spending a lot of money, not slowing down. These businesses are going to continue to have good earnings at that. So the stock market will good. He's just going to have nothing but good signs to keep hiking into which I'm telling you, in my opinion, when it catches up, I think it's gonna be a very, very rough time in the economy, and I think it's gonna be very ugly when it does catch up. I hope you guys enjoyed this Sunday video. If you did, hit the like button, it lets me know. I appreciate you being subscribed, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.